Welcome. <laughs> We're so glad you're joining us for Church at Home today. I'm Tanya Cummings, one of the ministers here, and I'm here with Aaliyah today. Hi. You know, uh, there's something really special happening at CCD today. Can you remember what it is, Aaliyah? It's a church's anniversary. Yes. And can you remember how old this church is today? 147. That is so old, <laughs> isn't it? How old are you, Aaliyah? Nine. Nine. Well, usually we have one of the older members of the church come and cut the anniversary cake when we're all having a uh, gathering here to, uh, together and having a party. But today we've got Aaliyah, one of the younger members, to cut the cake, which we'll do shortly. But first, I just want to tell you a little bit about the history of uh, these this church and the, the grounds we're on. And of course, originally this land this property was owned by the Bunurong people or it belonged to them and we just want to really acknowledge that the ancestors and uh, past and uh, you know the leaders and the indigenous people present and we just want to acknowledge that this once belonged to them this beautiful land and it's somewhere along in history this land was bought by two wealthy settlers uh, called the Attenboroughs, our brother and sister. There was a Thomas and Mary Attenborough. Could you imagine you and your brother owning the whole of Zingli? Mm. No, <laughs> it's a lot of land, isn't it? It was pretty uh, amazing how wealthy they were. They, they basically owned the whole of Zingli. And Mary Attenborough had a vision. She had a dream to build an Anglican church in Dingley, which is what happened in 1873. The Little Heritage Church was built and finished and dedicated on September 21st, 1873. And it's just such a beautiful building, which has been kept as a heritage building. There's beautiful stained glass windows, which we'll put up some pictures of in just a minute. So many uh, people still love to get married in there. We still love our 8.30 service in there. And it's just a really beautiful space, a sacred space to spend time with God in prayer and uh, receive communion. And it's just such a blessing to to have still uh, in Dingley. And so we look forward to regathering there where, when we can after COVID. Uh, and you know, it's not just this beautiful building. There's been so many lovely people uh, come through this place over the years. It's been a special place for so many people, including Roger, Roger Hendrickson. And he's got some great memories of this place. So we might hear a bit of his story just now. Hello, Roger. And uh, Roger, it's Christchurch Stingley's anniversary today, 147 years. Uh, I know you haven't been there all that time, but can you tell us um, the circumstances that brought you to Christchurch Stingley? Well, Reverend Walters, that um, was 38 years ago. We left South Africa on the rather extreme circumstances under the apartheid system. The night before we left South Africa under some rather difficult political situations, I prayed and asked God that if he should bring myself and my family here to Australia safely, I would promise him that I would serve him thereafter. Uh, once we arrived and we were safe, we needed to find a church to go to to say thank you. So we looked up the Malways and found Christchurch Dingley in the Malways, and uh, we turned up there. Reverend Isaacson was um, the pastor there, and he welcomed us with open arms, which uh, that warm, lovely feeling he gave us, and we're still there 38 years later. Was that a surprise to you, the sort of welcome that you received? Yes, coming from the background, <laughs> that we came from, um, we didn't expect that type of welcome at all. And uh, yeah, bearing in mind that we were the only few black faces that entered there for the first time. And uh, uh, the way we were warmly welcomed was really uh, very surprising to us. Yeah, and there was a bit more to that welcome from the congregation you were telling me um, what what followed from that on your first day there? Well, uh, John Pilbara, after the service, that first very first Sunday, approached us and invited our family to lunch. 
uh, obviously very surprising because in the history of South Africa, we did never had lunches or any association with any whites in South Africa. So to be invited for lunch uh, was a real surprise and we went along um, and made this amazing discovery that there were nine children of their own there. So uh, I was absolutely shocked to find that someone could invite us for lunch. There must have been about 16 of us all together. Uh, <laughs> that love and warmth I will never forget. So that made a deep impression on you. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Um, and after that followed other invitations by parishioners. Mm. So I think you described it to me as you felt like you had the silver spoon treatment. <laughs> absolutely. You must appreciate that because of our upbringing, um, this was just a complete awakening in our lives yeah and since then you've become just very deeply involved haven't you and and extended that sort of uh, hospitality to others i'm aware well i had made a promise to god that uh, <laughs> i would have to serve him i had to keep my promise so you're a man of your word roger and uh you, you've joined your life with a god of his word and uh, we can see the fruit of that in you. You're, you're an amazing gentleman. And uh, thank you for sharing with us just this little uh, taste of your experience uh, today. Thank you, Wayne. God bless Christchurch Dingley after uh, the recent passing of Evelyn. The warmth of everybody at Christchurch Dingley was truly amazing, just beautiful. And I'm really, really grateful. Thank you, Roger. Bless you, my brother. Bless you, Wayne. Well, CCD really is a special community and we are so blessed in so many ways. So it's great to celebrate our 147th anniversary here together. It's time to cut the cake. So much to celebrate. Yay. Best wishes, CCD. Happy 147th anniversary. I hope we can celebrate at home. And you know, someone else is celebrating a significant day today as well, and hopefully with a cake, that's Patricia. Yeah, just give a special mention to her from Colette, Grant, Marcel, Mia, Enrico, Ashley, Tyler, Mason, and Lorraine. And especially all your friends at CCD. Happy 80th birthday, Patricia. We hope you're having a great day and have some cake at home as well. And a big shout out to my dad, whose birthday it also is today. So happy birthday and happy anniversary to anyone celebrating anniversaries and birthdays this week. I hope you have a great day. Okay, I'm gonna go cut up this cake so we can all share a bit. And uh, you're gonna go help Baden with his children's message. Yeah. Good morning CCD and happy anniversary to all of us. Now I'm joined here today with a special assistant, Aaliyah, who's going to be helping with the kids spot. Now Aaliyah, I've given you some coins that you can choose to spend or keep for yourself. You've got a big handful of coins. Now I'm gonna show you some objects and you can choose to purchase them and sacrifice some of your coins for the object. But at the end, you get to keep all the coins. How does that sound? Awesome, here we go. So the first object that I have here is a squishy soccer ball. So this is a fun thing. You can play with your brother outside or even by yourself. Do you want to buy this? No, thanks. No, so she's giving, she's choosing to keep a hold of her coins and say no to the ball. The next object is a very special bubble wand. Now this is a really cool thing. It's a wand filled with liquid and you can pull it out and run up and down the hallways and make bubbles. Do you want to buy this? It's only one coin. Yes, please. All right, so one coin, thank you. And there's your first item. All right, the next one is a bag of rubbish. Now this bag of rubbish basically has old used napkins in it. It's got uh, an off bag of Cheetos that are one year out of date. Um, it's really exciting, but it is filled with rubbish. Would you want to buy this? No, thanks. Yeah, so this doesn't have much worth to you, and that's okay. We'll get rid of this bag of rubbish. And finally, the last thing is an iPhone. Would you want to buy the iPhone? Yes, please. Okay, that's two coins. 
There we go, one, two, excellent, and there's your iPhone. Thank you very much. The reason Aaliyah and I did this experiment today was because we looked at how much we're willing to sacrifice. How many coins do you have left over in your hand? About 10. About 10 coins left over. She bought some things that she wanted, but kept on to that. And that's what we start to see in Romans 5. What you'll find in your activity books is all about how Jesus um, sacrificed everything for every single one of us. He didn't pick and choose between the items saying, yes, I want that one and not that one. He decided to give it all and get all, all of us. He paid everything for everyone. And that's what we've been talking about briefly in our activity. Plus there's a special fun anniversary crossword in there for you. So enjoy the rest of the service. Happy anniversary. And thanks, Aaliyah. Uh, the reading chosen for today is from Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 11. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is my pleasure and privilege now to introduce our guest preacher for our anniversary service today who is a long-time friend of CCD, an ordained pastor with the Churches of Christ and former lecturer with Tabor College, and for quite some years a gentle and faithful pastoral presence at Christ Church Dingley. Since his wife Esther's retirement, uh, they have returned to the Churches of Christ fold, but he remains a valued friend and mentor to myself and is much loved by our church community. Please welcome Ron White. Thank you for finding us and pressing play today. I am absolutely honoured to be here at this anniversary. I am thrilled with what I've got to say to you. I believe you're going to be blessed. And I have just amazing stuff to share with you. But let, first, let's pray. And that's going to mean this. We just check to make sure that we haven't subsided into movie mode, where we watch a screen and we sort of half go asleep. That means that we need to check that we haven't gone into goggle box mode where we make these cryptic comments about the strange things that are happening on screen and surely there's enough that you're seeing and hearing that you can make strange comments about. It means when we pray that we allow that which is deepest within us to begin to surface. So look beyond the screen you might want to close your eyes, you might want to leave your eyes open, and let's pray. Our Father God, grant us calm that we may be able to understand. And grant us your peace that our hearts might be open, that you might stir there. And we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. What I want to say to you today is simply this, that you are divinely, amazingly, I haven't got words enough for it, incredibly loved, deeply, so deeply beyond yet anything you've ever yet discovered. And when I say that, that's a personal thing for me. 
You'll probably hear that in my voice and something of the story that I'm about to tell you. When I was a young man, I was shifted without any permission from me into a regional Victorian town. I was away from my friends, I was away from my family. And deeper thoughts started to rise within me. How come I get to be in this business where I'm just placed anywhere and nobody asks my permission? But a few weeks later, how come I'm working so hard to put money in someone else's pocket? And then a little while later, here I am promoted into this, this position, but is it for me to slavishly, rung by rung, move up this ladder of success, perhaps only to find that when I get to the top of the ladder, that the ladder's against the wrong wall. So thoughts began to rise within me and having no friends and having no family in that particular regional town, I would drive on the weekend out on some isolated road and I would love it away from the Melbourne traffic and stoplights. I would stop by the road somewhere, I'd open my mind, I'd put the seat back and put my feet up on the dashboard and my mind would just rove anywhere at all. What did it matter what I believed? What did it matter if, if I even passionately didn't believe? Wouldn't affect what is. And on one of these occasions I found that I was parked on the side of the road next to this massive wheat field. I could hardly see a fence line on the other side. I got out of the car, squeezed through the wire fence, started to walk out in the middle of the wheat field and I just sat in the middle of it. It was absolutely beautiful. It was a bright, clear, blue sky. The wheat was up at a height where I could see over the top of it. And when the breeze would come, it would just move across the wheat heads and the wheat heads would bow before this gentle breeze. And my mind was open again. I thought to myself, here I am sitting on this planet Earth Sun rises in the east, sets in the west. If I was sitting on the planet Venus, sun would rise in the west and it was set in the east. What difference does my perspective make or my experience? Surely there's got to be something that is on which I can build my life. And that my life not be wasted just with following with whatever anybody says. And deep down from inside of me, I found myself saying, God, if you are there, I so want to know you. Well, after that day, uh, I thought, well, what do you do when you respond to that yourself? You've got to pick up the piece of literature honoured by Jewish people, Muslim people, Christian people, the most honoured book in all of hi history, all of human civilization. So I picked it up and thought, now I'm going to read for myself. And there's the first four words in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning... God. And I thought, well, that's good. If you're going to go somewhere, you need to know where you're coming from. But then what did I mean when I said God? What do you think of when you hear me say God? I guess for me, um, God was like the most supreme of beings. You know, you would have fish and then you would have rodents and you would have animals and then you would have human beings and then you would have the tooth fairy and then you would have the Easter bunny and then you would have transformers and iron men, but maybe I've got the order of those mixed up a little bit. And then maybe you've got angels and spiritual powers, but the most supreme being above which there is no other is God. 
I guess that's what I had in mind, and I guess that's what you might have in mind. And so comes the argument, or well, is there God or is there not God? How do you know there's God? Can you prove there's God? Or can you prove that there's not God? The cosmonaut, Yuri Garin, goes up and first human being in space comes back and he's told to say, well, we didn't see God. It's a little bit like that argument that people have when they're talking about the abominable snowman, the Bigfoot, the Yeti. Does he exist? Well, some people say he exists. Does he not exist? Well, I don't know. Some people say that they see him. And other people say, well, you know, there's people dress up in gorilla suits and they get lots of uh, likes on Facebook and on YouTube and then they get a lot of money from it. How do you know it exists? You sure that it exists? Ah, you say, well, who cares? Let's just get on and live life. And that's what happens when you see God as the most supreme being. Is he there? Is he not? Some of you have probably said, well, who cares? Let's get on with it. God is not the most supreme being. I don't believe that. And this church at the corner of the roundabout here in Dingley doesn't believe that either. First four words of Genesis in the beginning. God. God is there before any beings before anything that has being, before matter, before motion, before movement, before time, before space. God is the source of all. The reason why there is anything. Well, how do you get to know that one that is? source of all. So I continue to read through the Old Testament. And it's a big book. But what's happening in the Old Testament is that this source of all begins to self-disclose, self-reveal, and initiate contact, interaction with people in circumstances and begins to happen in life where they are. And patiently over the centuries, here he is presenting himself. This is what I'm like. This is how I move. This is how I can be with you. Now, don't pick up your remote. I'm just saying this verbally. Let's fast forward through the Old Testament. Now we're in the New Testament. John chapter 1, verse 14. And here we read that the source of all The source of all takes to himself a human body. Body like you've got. Now you know about this because you probably call it Christmas and have celebrated it all your life. But let's think about this for a moment. They say that there's more grains of sand on the beaches of Brighton, Sandringham, Parkdale, Edithvale and Aspendale, because there's more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on those beaches. No. That there are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on the beaches of every beach within the world. And here, the source of this speechless magnificence is here in a human body. And so much at home within a human body that people see this person that they call Jesus, walk straight past and say, "Mm, nah, he's weird. This is the source of all things. Having disclosed and unrevealed himself through centuries and centuries, suddenly is standing in her human body saying, If you've seen me, you've seen the source of all things. You've seen the Father. Now the Buddha doesn't say that. Neither does your university professor say, if you've seen me, you've seen the source of all things. Muhammad doesn't say that. Your parents don't say that. Your life coach doesn't say that. Neither does the person next door or your your parents. 
But this one stands there saying, if you look at me, you can see what God, the source of all things, is like. How he moves. How he treats people. How he happens within life. Well, some people say, and you heard it, well, all of these religions are the same. They're not. You have these amazing people, spiritual, sincere people, many of them with terrific insights that we can honour and respect, seeking to make contact with this elusive God figure, to know him, to meet with him, to be with him. Christianity is not that. This is about God the source having revealed himself little by little by little, but then coming within a human body wanting to make contact with us. Not the other way around. So let's fast forward a little bit more. First four books of the what we call the New Testament all finish with this major focus on crucifixion. You've probably seen that little cross around people's neck. Crucifixion. It's said that the Greeks under Alexander the Great travelled over to the east and came back with these two prominent ways of how to extinguish people's lives. The first was put a stake in the ground and impale them. Horrific. The second was crucifixion, which the Romans that followed them preferred because it meant that they could prolong the death longer and make it more painful and more excruciating. And here at the end of what we call these Gospels, you have the source of all life, having revealed himself slowly over the centuries, now in a human body, he is splayed out on a cross, outside the walls. Outside the walls is where they would tip their sewerage and where they would dump their garbage. And that's where they placed him. He came to his own and his own received him not. Naked, out for display by one of the major inroads to Jerusalem. As a warning that if you do not stay in step with what society wants of you, you will pay a price. Crucified. The birds would sit on the hills around the place like they used to on the mounds around the tips around 3172 as the garbage was tipped out. The birds would sit there waiting for up to a moment where a defenceless person could no longer protect themselves and down they'd swoop and peck out the moist eyes first so they'd be blinded. Crucifixion. In times in history that have so many people crucified that they didn't have crosses Enough for them, they'd just take the body down, throw it aside, and well was it called the place of the skull. Ravaging dogs would find their feet. Here in the midst of it, the source of all, every galaxy and universe, having revealed himself and come in a body, is now crucified. What is this? What love is this? That is not sentimentality and that is not a sensation, but tips everything out until there is no more. Experiencing our pain. Do you have pain in your body? He's been in that experience. Have you had those that have you've just given everything to? And they've betrayed you and walked away. He's been in that experience. Do you know what it's like? Here when he needed his friends the most, in this moment, they evaporate. Can you remember when that happened for you? Can you remember the moment of humiliation? When people spoke to you in a way and planned how they could wound you and mark you? Can you remember the time where it was so unjust where they said this and they did this and it just wasn't true? 
You see, the, this incredible, wonderful thing is that the source of all God has revealed himself, come in a body, and then got into our pain. Got into our experience. And got into our death, even though you and I haven't experienced it yet. And this, having tipped everything out, arms wide open, heart exposed, as if God, the source of all things, says, I am brave, I am bruised, this is who I am meant to be, this is me. I'm not ashamed to be seen. I make no apology. This is me. What a love is this? No greater love has man. The paradigm of what love is. So when we fast forward again into the reading that Wayne has well brought to us today from Romans chapter 5, it says, but God demonstrates his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is God showing us what he is like. But you notice it doesn't say God demonstrated his love for us. Past tense. Finished. Gone. In this beautiful chapel on this roundabout in Dingley, we're not here talking about a martyr or a great spiritual person in the past. This is not a museum where we gather together talking about something that is horrific. It doesn't say, but God demonstrated his love. It says, but God demonstrates his love. That's present tense. How he exposed himself in abandoned, complete love then is his demonstration of how he is now. And that ought to blow you away. Here in the room where you are, with your, however you are in your circumstances and your feeling and your lockdown, beyond the screen, this is how God, the source of all things, is towards you. Member of the community here. Resident of 3172. Passer by this building at the roundabout. I haven't got words enough to say. But you are divinely, incredibly in this moment. As you are loved with an everlasting love. And we've been on this corner here for all of these years with this one desire that anybody that would listen and hear would receive it and know it in a way that never ends. Why don't we just pray? Four of us. One, two, three, four of us. Lord, we just uh, look beyond the presentation and the recording in this moment. And we just love you, Lord. We just love you, Lord. And we're just blown away that you could. Be as you are on the cross to us in every moment of our lives. Ah. Hallelujah. Words fail. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We've just heard about the amazing, incredible love of God. 
and we have the privilege of being called his children, those who believe in his son, Jesus. So let's join together in talking to that God who promises to answer our prayers. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for your faithfulness and goodness to the people of Christ Church Dingley since its beginnings in Mary Attenborough's prayer shed. We thank you for her faith and generosity that made possible the construction of this much loved heritage church and the provision of the lands that it sits upon. We give you thanks, Father, for the wise stewardship of this land over many centuries by the first peoples of this land and honour them as the original custodians, particularly the Bunurong people who continue to cherish these lands as their home. We thank you for the legacy of faith in the Lord Jesus and the life of the Holy Spirit that has been passed down to us. For all priests and deacons and lay ministers and all who have served you sacrificially and courageously through the decades. Give us in this generation grace to be worthy of their mantle and to continue to shine the light of Christ brightly in the world you loved and in which you gave your son's life for. Father, we pray for the people you've placed us among, this community of Dingley Village and the surrounding areas from which we come and where we work, study, serve and play. May your blessing and protection rest over this people, over the sporting clubs, the businesses, health, welfare, educational institutions, over all residences and people, the young, the strong, the vulnerable and the aged. May a thirst for the things of God grow in our community. May people of peace be raised up in positions of influence throughout this community. And may we be wisely governed by our local, state and federal governments so that the gospel might be freely shared. Lord of heaven, have mercy on our land, our nation of Australia. Revive your church of all denominations. Send the Holy Spirit for the sake of the lost, the least and the broken. May your kingdom come to our nation in Jesus mighty name and a prayer for the situation we find ourselves in under COVID. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is the great physician who healed the sick, cured the blind and deaf and raised the dead, and who throughout all history holds dominion over disease and death. In your mercy to this world, Arrest and eradicate this coronavirus. Heal the afflicted and comfort those who have suffered from this scourge so that those who suffer may know your healing heart and hand. That those who are anxious or burdened may know your comfort and your peace. The peace that passes understanding and that the watching world may know your sovereign authority prevailing power, mercy and grace, and that all may come to know, love and worship you. We ask in the name of Jesus who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen and Amen. Hello, Carol. Good, good. Hi, Wayne. We're talking to you on our anniversary uh, day. Now, what's that picture you're holding up there? There's a bit of a story to that. You're quite a unique, um, a member of a very unique group of people, I understand. Can you tell us about it? Yes, certainly can. This is a family photo. I'm of my mum and dad and my five older brothers and sisters and myself. I'm the baby in mum's arms at Christchurch Dingley's 100th anniversary in 1973. Wow. The reason why, yeah, 
we're at the anniversary, the 100th anniversary. Who would have guessed it? How did that Yep, occur? September the 23rd. How did we got there because, yeah, certainly we have family history with CCD. Mum's mum was an Armstrong, Nellie Armstrong. Hmm. And the Armstrongs had a market garden on Tootle Road in Dingley. Her parents were Henry and Elizabeth. And they had six children. Mm. And they, yeah, they had a market garden on Tootle Road and they attended Christchurch Dingley. And um, uh, actually, their son, Trevelyn, who was Nellie's older brother, was killed in World War I. And the stained glass window in the old church is a dedication to Trevelyn Armstrong. Wow, that's. In part of our history that we would have been totally unaware of, Carol. Um, so did yeah. you grow up at Christchurch Stingley? Tell me about what happened after that. No, I didn't actually. Mum actually grew up in Springvale. Uh, her father was Vic Fleming. Nellie and Vic lived in Springvale. And Mum and her brothers and sisters were actually christened at Christchurch Stingley. Uh, but they attended the Church of England, as it was known back in the, those days, in Springvale. Mm. And when mum and dad were married, in, they lived in Dandenong, moved to Dandenong because dad was a market gardener in Dandenong. And um, St Michael's was built, I think, around about the early 1960s in North Dandenong. And so mum and dad and our family went to St Michael's on Heatherton Road, North Dandenong. That's the church we all grew up in. Right. Well, you're quite a pioneering market garden family uh, spread across Dingley and uh, Dandenong. It's wonderful. So tell us a bit about how you ended up coming back to Christchurch, Dingley. What was part of that journey, Carol? Yeah. Well, what happened is that um, at the time, for a, few, uh, for a short period, uh, my friend Paula and I, would often go to um, another church that was a larger church and, and um, we did enjoy it and there was some great sermons. Um, but I was kind of looking to come back to a smaller church and uh, probably more to a traditional church that I grew up in as well. But also I did like the contemporary worship as well. And it was actually my mum who s suggested, why don't you go down to um, Dingley and, and um, yeah, go down there and see, see what you think. And, of course, she had family history down there and spoke fondly of Christchurch Dingley. Mm. So Paula and I, and at that stage, that was March 2010, Dingley had the evening service as well, the youth and young adult service mm. read. And we went on this night and um, it, it, we thoroughly enjoyed it and felt at home and it was so welcoming. And, and obviously uh, Christchurch Dingley had a mixture of the traditional and the contemporary worship, which I really enjoyed. And being a smaller church, I found it was... I love the community atmosphere and I still do and I still feel very at home at Christchurch Dingley. Oh, wonderful, Carol. Thank you so much for sharing uh, that little piece of history um, uh, and, and the way, the connection of yourself and your family with Christchurch Dingley's past and now into the present. So thank you so much and, and bless you. And you're contributing to that traditional and contemporary with the, the music that you're playing for the hymn singing, as well as uh, at times yeah. at 30 service. So thank you so much. God bless you. No worries. Thank you, Wayne. Bye. Well, we have had a very packed service today. We hope you've enjoyed the 147th anniversary celebrating with us. There's more celebrations to come on Zoom after the service today, so I hope you can jump on there, join us for some fellowship, and we'll be playing a great song also by Misty Edwards that really ties in well with the message that Ron brought us today. We want to encourage you to keep thinking on that message and really, you know, sharing the love of Christ with everyone that you meet. And, uh, you know, we are really blessed to have this church community. 
We also love our youth. Unfortunately, they're not meeting for a couple of weeks, school holidays. I hope you have a nice break from school and uh, from youth group and just relax and chill. Come back refreshed next term. So next Sunday, we have not just our 10.30 a.m. service, but also 5 p.m. as well. Tammy's going to do some, oh, sorry, no, Howard is going to do some beautiful music this month. Uh, Tammy will do next month. So we're just going to have a great time of worship together and live music and fellowship, as well as looking at the Word of God and praying together. So I hope you can join us for that next Sunday, 5 p.m. Also next weekend itself is going to be really full. We, there is a prayer opportunity all day Saturday, all day Sunday, called a, a National uh, Solemn Assembly. So Indigenous leaders are gathering to pray for our nation, uh, so a non-Indigenous leaders, and we're all invited to pray for the nation of Australia. We really want to reconcile, we want to learn to live together on these lands, and we want to pray for healing of the land, and of course, you know, get rid of this coronavirus. So we hope that if you are led uh, by God to pray in that way, we hope that you can join in the National Assembly of Prayer. So may you have a great week in the lead up to next weekend, which promises to be awesome. And please go out with this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. Amen.